Alright, welcome to my program where I'll show you something. This is called a. I don't know. Okay. You know. <clears throat> well, you know what a zero is. Do you know what a pole is? Well, it's pretty easy. You say it's zero, but let's say a stupid transfer function is s plus a over s plus b. And this thing above is a zero, and this thing below is a pole. Why is it a zero? Why? Why? Because when s plus a equals to zero, what will happen to hash set? Zero! But what if s plus b equals to zero? H plus Z, H Z becomes a infinity. Well, you can expect that this is zero because this is zero. And this is a pole because it goes up to infinity. So that pretty much concludes the basic concepts of poles and zero. So we're going to look for uh, how do you apply it to this annoying unit circle. What do we see in here? So we are looking for e to the power of j omega. And this, and uh, before I proceed, this is real, and this is the imaginary set. And as you can see, if j means cos omega plus j sine omega, and this corresponds to any point in this. Note that the magnitude of this one, meaning that this radius is 1. Okay? If the radius is 1, cos omega. So let's say, check this point. This is omega. So cos omega is... I have no idea what it is. Okay, it's this one. This is cos omega. This is sine omega, but that is not important. But it's actually important, actually. But uh, yeah, you get a point. You get a point. It basically states which position is this in. So, and omega equals to pi means it's over here, and omega equals to pi over two means it's over here, and omega equals to three pi over two means it's over here. So that's how you traverse through the circle. Sorry, I delete that. If you want it back, I can show it to you, but you probably won't use it. And we can always pause my video on what shit you want to do with it. So, what about the poles? Poles. Hmm, poles. Poles. Hmm, poles. Well, what do you think about S plus and S plus B? Both of them are real. So, if both of them are real, where are they? Are they going to be in either of this? Let's uh, reject No, region. No, neither. It's just going to be on this line because they are real. Real means, let's say, S plus A, negative A, is right over here. So, this is your first zero. And maybe in B, let me change that to a negative b so this is my b what if s plus a where a is in complex if a is complex it means that it must be either here or here and it must have a conjugate which explains this pair okay so that's a complex conjugate. This the complex conjugate. This might be a. Let me just put this in a better word. A plus j a imaginary, let's say, and this is negative a minus j a imaginary, and something like that. So, how do we really use this feature? Simple, actually. A transfer function 
I'm not going to use as, it's set actually. So a transfer function has a polynomial of denominator, which is denoted, I don't know, maybe we'll just use Q set for now, and a denominator, Q set. So we can express each as hmm, set minus or plus a1, set plus a2, and so on, and z plus b1, set plus b2, and so on. So, how are they related to the unit circle in any way? It's pretty easy. Let's say I have, I have a pole, and my point of interest is here. Where I have my omega equals to something, so this is my k omega position, current position. So the way I calculate it is this is my distance, I call it p, and my angle is just like this, angle of p. I just made that up, whatever you want it to be. So, so it could be further simplified that. Whatever the denominator, and the below is p. Now you might be wondering, what if I put this closer here? What will be? What will happen to value of p? P decreases. Decreasing p means h set increases, right? Because this thing is decreasing. And the whole term should increase, and that's why it's called a pole. And when this thing gets closer to this, to this, it becomes a larger value. If it goes away, the value of p increases. Hence, decreasing the overall value of h z, because one over a big number is a small number. Correct. Now let's go to pole oh, no zeros now. Zeros have the opposite effect because it's at the numerator right now. I'm not gonna put zero over here. No, I'm gonna put zero here. No, no, I'm gonna put zero here for your purpose. I'm gonna put the point of interest in here, and I call this distance a D. It's made up obviously. And an angle D. And you know, the transfer function t over something. So when this distance increases, what will happen to this value? Increases, right? t increases, h just increases. Simple. What if it gets close? It, the value of t decreases, over value decreases. But what if the value is here? What will, be, what will happen to the value of t? Zero. What will, what will happen to the hedge set? Zero. Hmm. That's an interesting observation. Now let's put it a pole here. And the same way we traverse the point from closer, closer to poles. And we can notice that the value of the pole decreases. But if the value of the pole decreases, it means it's going to increase the overall value. I mean the whole value. So the closer it gets, the higher the value goes. So I can see the value goes like this. And it goes down again. Wait, right? when it goes, when it goes past the pole. What happens when it's at the pole? It's gonna go infinity actually. So yeah, that's your answer. What about this then? If we start from if we start from here and get closer, the first is d over one, it's gonna get it's gonna start from high and if it's closer, it's gonna be low until d equals zero. Zero and we're gonna go high again when it goes past the d. So apparently I I ran out of time to record. And so see you next part.